In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this rainbowy, psychedelic kind of retro effect. It looks great, and the coolest thing about it is that it's a live effect, meaning once you've made it, you can change your font, you can change the text, and the effect will stay with it. So let's take a look. All right, so as always, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to make a new document. You can make this any size you want. You can select a print size, like A4 or letter. Uh, I'm gonna work with a document that's 4,000 by 5,000 pixels wide and CMYK. And if you wanna save yourself a bit of time, you can also download my free template that I made for you that just has this document set up and it has a few colors added here into your swatches just to save you a little bit of time. But as always, I really encourage you to experiment with your own colors. It will help you grow as a designer, but if you are color challenged, don't worry, just follow along with these colors for now. So I'm gonna open this template file and the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to add your text. So hit T to select the text tool click on your canvas and type whatever text you want. I'm gonna type this what kind of word with a couple A's. As you saw in the intro, scale it up and pick any font you like. Uh, I actually forgot which font I'm using here. What is this? This is Karak. Okay, so this I believe is a font from the Adobe font library. So I'll make sure to link to that below. If you have Illustrator, you should have free access to this font as well. So let's select that. Karak medium melted, there we go. Uh, next up, I'm going to head to paragraph. I'm going to center this and then go to align and make sure that this button down here, align to artboard is selected and then center this vertically and horizontally. Actually, I'm going to move it up a little bit. I think that looks better. Now I'm going to actually move these letters apart a little bit by adjusting the tracking. So head to character tracking. If you hold shift and use your arrow keys, it'll go up in increments of 10. Um, you want there to be a little bit of space because the effect's gonna kind of come down to the, the left like this. So let's try 120, let's see how that looks. Again, we'll be able to change all this later. That's the great thing about this effect. I think that is actually a little bit too big now. We wanna make sure there's some white space around the edges. So let's scale this down just a little bit. All right, perfect. Now normally what you would do to change the color is you would select your text and then you'd head up here. But the problem with this approach is that the colors won't show up in your appearance panel. And you'll see in a little bit why that does matter. But first, let me actually just quickly tell you to pull up your appearance panel if you have it on the sidebar already. If you don't, head to Windows Appearance um, and then just keep that somewhere on your screen. I like having mine snapped up here. Um, I'm going to hit Undo. And what I'm gonna do, instead of changing the color up here, I'm going to head to the Appearance panel and click this button here, which will add a new fill. And then from here, I'm going to then change the color. Uh, so for the top color, you want to use something bright. I'm going to use this cream color. Um, and now you'll see that this fill will always appear here on the side. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing for a stroke. I'm going to add a dark stroke, black stroke, maybe six or seven. I think seven pixels looks pretty cool. And that is the basic kind of outline and shape for this text. Now this font already has a really nice hand-drawn kind of look to it, but I wanna actually make these lines look just a little bit more, a little rougher maybe, they're a little bit too smooth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna head to Effect, uh, Distort and Transform and Roughen. Now that's obviously way too much, that's not what we want. The first thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna select this to Smooth, and then I'm going to select Absolute here rather than Relative and move this down to, um, I think two pixels looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually remove the detail as well. So the size will kind of affect how much these swings are in the line and um, the detail will affect how many of them there are. So we don't want too much detail and we also don't want them to come out a little bit. We want this to be a very nice kind of subtle effect. There we go, that's pretty cool I think. Maybe one more. And again, the cool thing is that this will now apply to any text. You know, if I change this, you'll see that these lines still have this same hand-drawn kind of look to them. So that's the great thing about this live effect. All right, so let's zoom back out. And what we're now gonna do is add our first kind of color in this rainbow, the first like drop here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head to fill select fill in the appearance. I'm gonna click and drag it down onto this button down here. This is the new uh, or duplicate button and you'll see it will duplicate that fill. 
uh, what I'm going to do is select the bottom one. I'm going to double click it. Oh, sorry, no, not double click it. I'm going to make sure it's selected, then head to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Transform. And from here, what I'm going to do is leave the scale. I'm going to head down to the Move section, and I'm going to change this here. Is Preview set? Why is this not showing up? Um, that is weird. One second, one second. Oh, it's because I didn't have this selected. OK, that's a bit of a flaw in Illustrator. If you select this and then unselect it, it'll show you the same effect here in the appearance, um, but you're not actually changing anything to your text. So if you have that same mistake that I just had, uh, make sure that your text is actually selected. And then let's do this again. Uh, just either drag this down, or you can just click this button as well. Actually, it's a little bit easier. And then you can head to the effect either up there, or you can also click down here, this little FX button, uh, distort and transform and transform. There we go. So I'm gonna move down to the move section and you'll see, there we go. Now, as I move this, you'll see that it's basically creating, it's moving this layer off to the side. And because we have a duplicated layer here, this top one stays where it is. And then this second one, we can move around down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this top one to minus 40 and then set the top one to 40. If we go minus 40 here as well, it'll go up into this corner. So if you do want to play around with different directions, just try entering different values here. Again, I'm going to go with minus 40 and 40. You want to make sure that the rest of these options are selected. You don't want any other copies. If you're happy with that, just hit OK. Uh, now, one thing that you'll notice if you zoom in, this shape here doesn't have the roughen effect applied to it. Uh, and the reason for that is that this roughen effect, you can see, is applied only to this stroke right now. Um, so if I collapse that, basically you can see this is like a property of the stroke. If you want this to apply to everything, what you can do is click and drag this out to the very bottom, and you'll see that this now applies to this effect as well. All right, so let's select this fill and we're going to change the color. Um, it doesn't really matter which color you go with here. Oh, again, same thing. I forgot to select the text. So select the text, change the fill. I think I went with a red fill first. Yep, that's right. And now let's do the same thing for the stroke. We're going to duplicate it, drag it to be just on top of the red line, and then we're going to apply the same transform effect. Now you could just select the stroke and then you know do the whole thing again. Uh, but a little shortcut for you here is you can also duplicate this transform effect and drag it up. Either duplicate it here, then drag it up, or even quicker, click the effect, hold Alt or Option, and then click and drag it up here. And now this stroke effect is also being moved 40 pixels down to the side and down. Um, so there we go. That's looking pretty cool. And you can see just how quick and easy this effect really is. It comes together very fast. So let's do this one more time. We're going to change this fill to blue. Oh my god, I can't believe I've done it again. <laughs> All right, change this fill. Duplicate this fill. Change it to blue. And then add the transform. The transform is already added, so we're going to double click it, or just single click it actually, um, to edit this transform effect. And then we're going to double the space here. So. Whatever you pick, just double it. In my case, I had 40, so I'm going to up that to 80. There we go. And let's do the same thing to the font again. Sorry, the stroke. I'm going to delete this transform and then duplicate and drag this there. All right, just like that, you have this rainbow effect. Now, if you wanted, you could keep adding these layers. Just keep adding an extra 40 pixels or whatever interval you have picked. And you could actually add a really cool effect that just goes all the way out to the side of the canvas, um, which looks really nice as well. But just to keep this tutorial short, I'm going to leave it here. One other thing you can do, uh, and this is a stylistic choice, to make this text more legible, if you have letters that have kind of holes in them like that, you could punch these out. You know, before I do that, though, I'm going to quickly change the background color. So to do that, very easy, just pick whatever color you'd like to use for the background. I've selected this kind of just slightly off-white blue kind of color. I'm going to drag a rectangle around the canvas. I'm going to hit Command or Control, Shift, and left bracket to send that all the way to the bottom. Or if that doesn't work, just right-click, Arrange, 
send it to back. And that just, you know, makes it look a little bit more finished than having a white background. And then I'm going to use that same color to punch out these shapes here. So to do that, um, I'm going to select this text. I'm going to copy it, hit Command C or Control C, and then Control or Command F to paste it in front. And for this text, I'm actually going to delete all of these strokes and fills here. I'm going to select them, delete them. I'm going to right click and create outlines and then double click this to enter the group mode because you can see this is a grouped object. I'm going to double click it. Oops. Uh, then I'm going to hit A to select the direct selection tool. I'm going to drag all around the top of these circles. Basically what I'm trying to do is delete everything other than those circles. So I'm going to delete that and delete that. There we go. Perfect. Now I have just these circles here. I'm going to select those and I'm going to hit Shift X to invert the fill and the stroke. Um, you can also just press this button here, which will do the same thing. And as you can see, the roughen effect is still applied to it. So I'm going to now change the fill to this background color. Double click outside of that. And as you can see, it's basically, it looks like it's just punched through this effect in the back. It just makes the text a little bit more legible, but it's entirely up to you. Kind of looks, it looks pretty cool without it as well, to be honest but that's just one other effect you can add. Now, one final thing you can do, you could leave it like this, or if you want to give it even more of a psychedelic kind of feel, you can also, whoops, I'm going to just lock that background layer. Keyboard shortcut for that is Command-2, I believe. I'm going to select this. I'm going to head to Object, Envelope Distort, and Make with Warp. Now you can play around with these different effects here. The ones that I think look pretty cool are um, flag looks pretty cool and you can kind of reduce the intensity here. Uh, another cool one is wave. I think wave actually looks really cool. So I'm going to do wave. Um, you can also play around with rise. I mean, play around with all of them, but I think those are the three that I think look best for this effect. So let's just give that, you know, if we do a before and after, you can see it just adds a little bit more of a psychedelic feel to it. So just like that, you've created this very cool text effect. If you do follow this tutorial, I'd love to see your results. Just link to them in the comments below. And if you have any other text effects that you would like me to deconstruct or teach you how to make, also be sure to make sure, be sure to make sure to let me know about those in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to keep leveling up your Illustrator, make sure to check out this playlist over here somewhere. Um, for more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.